Hello everybody and welcome to another amazing video of DIY investing. For today's video, we're going to be talking about why I believe that the next impulse for Bitcoin coming will be the last before we see a major correction, what that means for the altcoins moving forward. I believe that with this being the final impulse for Bitcoin, the most money of the altcoin cycle is going to be coming in at this point. The biggest breakouts for altcoins is going to be happening very soon. And if we're prepared beforehand, we're going to be able to set ourselves up for the most profit over the next month. I'm going to also be giving you guys five of my favorite altcoins that I think are going to set up in big ways when this breakout happens and how we can go about preparing for the move ahead. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And with that being said, let's jump right into this amazing video today. Alrighty guys, now here we are to start off today's video talking about Bitcoin. I want to talk to you guys about my Elliott Wave count and why I believe that the next impulse coming will take us to our local top. Now guys, the big thing I want you guys to remember is inside of my last couple videos, what I've been talking about is where the heck is this Wave 3 going to end? And originally I was talking about the fact that it's either ended and we're already inside of Wave 4 or we still have one more impulse to go before the ending of that move. Now, as it stands where I believe that we are, I think that we've already finished wave three and this entire consolidation is wave four. I thought that we would actually end up coming back down to you know, about 21,000 or so. And the way it looks now, I'm honestly leaning towards the fact that we'll most likely just end up getting one more impulse that'll take us around 27,000. The big thing to understand here is I do believe that we're gonna clear the range highs, which is you know pretty much at around $25,000. And the way that the market structure looks is that's most likely where our peak will be. It's possible that we could overextend really high in this wave five, upwards of 30K, but I'm not really gonna be betting on that necessarily. I think the most likely scenario is that we just clear a little bit above the range highs, maybe to 26 to 27,000. And then that is where we're gonna get a deeper correction on the way back down. Now, when it comes to this and watching what we're doing right now, the way that the wave count looks to me is we already finished wave three, this is wave four, and what we're doing right now is working on our sub waves of wave five. This is wave one. I think that this wave three will take us outside of the range highs. Wave four will pro probably us flip the range highs at 25K, and then that'll take us for one more final impulse and the very top of this entire Elliott wave cycle. Now, the big thing I want you guys to remember here is inside of the very last impulse for Bitcoin, this is where the altcoins actually end up getting dominance over Bitcoin. This is where the most money that's going to flow into altcoins ends up going into them. And this is really where we see real alt season, I guess you could say, because Bitcoin always starts the charge. It's always Bitcoin first. Bitcoin will break out. It'll really kind of steal the spotlight. It'll bleed altcoins. Altcoins will lag and underperform. And then at the point where we get to our final impulse, all of the people that made money holding Bitcoin, they start to rotate those Bitcoin profits into altcoins. And that's what starts the whole altcoin cycle. And that's the way it's been every single cycle up to this point. Anytime we're in the final impulse for Bitcoin, we start to see cryptos like Dogecoin, all of the different Inus and different dog coins take off, meme coins start taking off, and altcoins as a whole end up outperforming. And that's pretty much what we've seen throughout this entire consolidation. We've seen a lot of different meme coins taking off. We've seen big rises inside of Dogecoin as well as Shiba Inu. And I do believe that this is ultimately a sign, at least an early warning sign, that the local top is close to being in. Now, when it comes to breaking out of this uh, resistance level 25K, I think a lot of people are going to be looking at that as, you know, the true uh, trend reversal. And a lot of people are going to end up FOMO buying at the top before we end up seeing a deeper correction, which if we end up seeing a deeper correction, if we pull up our Fibonacci, let's assume that we hit 27K. If we end up hitting 27K, I am expecting a pullback back to this 618 Fibonacci level, which is going to be basically $19,800. I would just say $20,000 to keep it simple. And that's kind of what I believe is going to end up happening. A lot of people seeing us break out of the range highs are going to FOMO buy at the top. Bitcoin will pull back. It'll come back into the range highs. Could even retest them get rejected here, and then that'll set us up for a deeper drop on the way back down before we reaccumulate and head back up to the upside. So most likely we're probably looking at about the late spring to early summer as the potential for a bottom before we start going back up again. And so it could literally be late summer before we're ever clearing any of the range highs and heading upwards past $30,000, which in my opinion, if we end up pulling back down here and we top somewhere around 27K, 
I'm personally looking to target upwards of about 40 to 50K in this next move, which would be looking at, you know, about 38,000 as the low end target. And then I could see us running all the way up here to about the 2618, which would be, you know, 45 to $50,000. And that's kind of what I'm going to be watching for throughout the year. You know, most likely, what ends up happening is something like this. We end up flipping this and then we get this big run up. Maybe we run all the way back up here to 48,000. And then we start another, you know, deeper correction like this. Go through some consolidation. And then that'll be taking us, you know, sometime towards the end of the year of 2023, beginning of 2024. And it's really, you know, April of 2024 that we have the next Bitcoin happening. Which in years past, what we have seen, and we're going to go all the way over here. Let's actually go to a different chart. Let's go to the all-time chart of Bitcoin, and let's talk about our very first cycle. Because in my opinion, it could end up behaving a lot more like what we saw over here. If we take this, we take it all the way over to here, and we copy that, we're going to run it all the way back to pretty much where we're at today. And this is kind of where I'm thinking that we'll end up playing out based off of how prior cycles look. And I'm not necessarily expecting a giant move up like what we saw in 2019. I think it'll be a little bit more consistent. And so what I think is gonna end up playing out is something along the lines of this, where we rally up here, somewhere a little bit above the range highs, like 27K or so. And then we get this pullback right here that'll take us back down to about $19,800. And I don't know exactly how this process is going to look. You know, if it just flatlined like that, great. It's going to be pretty obvious to tell what's going to happen. But if it's going to be a lot more choppy, just don't, you know, worry about that so much. It's the levels that we're trying to analyze. Because if we did this, it would follow where I would think that we would end up bottoming based off of Fibonacci, you know, about the 618 level right here. And so that's pretty much what I would be expecting for any short-term correction that we end up getting. And then, like I stated, our next move up will be taking us up to pretty much right here at about forty-eight dollars to $50,000, which is pretty identical to what this ended up doing in our first cycle. You know, I don't know what this correction will look like. We could literally come all the way back down and retest those range highs. Most likely, the level that we would end up retesting is pretty much this support floor at about 30K because that's going to be a big level. I think that our consolidation isn't going to break out of that right off the bat. We could run up and actually tag this level depending on how parabolic this move gets. But regardless, I don't think that we're going to be breaking out past that quite yet. I think most likely we pull back, reaccumulate above this level from our consolidation period inside of the bear market. And then our next breakout heading into, you know, sometime you know, at the later end of this year, that's going to be the part where we actually see us break out of 30K, run upwards of this first lower high, which is 50K, and then we'll pull back and retest this 30K level as well. Keep in mind that it might not be so symmetrical, but that's kind of the way that I look at the chart and see. I don't think that we're going to be breaking out going to 50K, you know, in this first impulse because we've already finished wave one and wave three. We only have wave five left. So it so unless wave five is just going to look absolutely insane and go straight up like that, which I don't think it will, I think most likely we end up stalling before 30K. And then that puts us into reaccumulation. And so I think a lot of people, I see anyways, looking for something like this, where we just rock it straight up near those all-time highs. And to be quite honest, I just don't agree with that. I think that this bear market will be more consistent with prior bear markets because ignoring 2019... This has kind of been the way that all of our bear markets went. This was like 280 days, and then we started our impulsing up, and then we just pretty much created a trend line, higher highs, higher lows, and it was much more consistent. If we go into our first cycle, it was pretty much the same thing, higher highs, higher lows, and then we went into a blow off top. And so I truly think that it's gonna be most likely playing out in a similar fashion as those earlier cycles because of the fact too many people are expecting just an instant move straight to $50,000. I think that that's gonna catch a lot of people off guard when we only barely break out of the range highs and then start pulling back. And so that's kind of my thoughts on the Bitcoin chart as it stands right now. Now guys, let's talk about the altcoins on today's list, ones that I think are gonna be setting up in a big way that could potentially provide us a lot of profit moving forward from here. Now, before we talk about that, I wanted to explain to you guys the Arbitrum TVL because of the fact we just flipped Polygon in total TVL. The only three cryptos that have more TVL than Arbitrum right now is Ethereum, Binance Coin, and uh, Tron. All of those networks have more TVL, but at the end of the day, guys, when we really think about it, 
The only reason Ethereum is the top is because it's the spotlight of all crypto. Every crypto that ever tried to create itself had to spawn through Ethereum first because Ethereum was the first platform to be able to actually create your own cryptos, right? So it makes sense why Ethereum's the leader. But when we look at Ethereum, the problem with Ethereum is the fact that the network gets congested, the fees get atrocious, and it's relatively slow for the most part. If you actually ended up using DeFi in the last cycle, you'll know that Ethereum almost made it obsolete. You know, when you're only messing with $500 to maybe $5,000, maybe even sub $10,000, and you have to pay $200 for a gas fee or three, $400 for a gas fee, there's no point of even trying to earn yield unless you've got you know hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars because the fees themselves are taking away any opportunity that you have to earn any sort of interest. And so it literally cuts out the ability for the average person like you and me to be able to earn any sort of profit. So because of that, we also saw you know the network get congested in ways where when it came to an NFT mint, if you guys minted any NFTs during the peak, there was periods of time where the gas fees were like 5,000 to 10,000 plus dollars. And the reason why is because Ethereum, uh, the, the fees act as a bidding system. So you could technically set your gas fee for as high as you want. And so if there's um, a really big opportunity inside of NFTs, and oh, there's a lot of wells that are also playing, they'll just keep outbidding each other because they've got millions of dollars to throw at the uh, market. So they might spend you know, $10,000 on one transaction fee just to get it to go through above everybody else's. And that's where the real issue ends up coming into Ethereum, the fact that it's almost unusable for the average person. I know for me personally, I'm not spending $10,000 for a gas fee. I'm not even gonna spend $1,000 for a gas fee unless I really know that that thing is gonna be doing something good. But it's all speculation at this point. And that's the reason why we've seen all of this money leaving Ethereum, leaving Binance Chain, because nothing really is happening on Binance Chain. Binance Chain is centralized and owned by Binance. So if Binance went bankrupt, their whole chain goes bankrupt as well. And so with all of the centralized exchanges and lenders going bankrupt in our last cycle, everybody's very skeptical about that. And, you know, Tron, we're not even going to talk about that because everybody knows that the only TVO happening through Tron is because of Binance Chain. So, all of those are really not very good reasons to be investing into DeFi protocols on Ethereum. The only ones that I see fit are the ones that are bridging to Arbitrum. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of those protocols that are built on Ethereum bridging over to Arbitrum and even new projects are strictly building on Arbitrum as a whole. And what we're looking at with this TVL is a very massive accumulation taking place. We've already flipped all of the main projects in TVL besides you know the very top ones, but I believe all of that money is gonna be going back into Arbitrum. We just saw our finished bear market in July and we've only seen higher highs and higher lows throughout the entirety of the last six months. Now we're at the point where I believe we're gonna be breaking out in a huge way and all of that money is gonna be going into Arbitrum altcoins. If we look over here and look at the total daily transactions of Arbitrum, this is one of the most bullish looking charts I've ever seen. And it's showing such steady, continuous growth you're not seeing just massive peaks like this that aren't sustainable. You're seeing a lot of development, a lot of people moving over and bridging, and that's why this chart is so bullish. We're just retested the previous highs of that last cycle of our peak in 2021, and we're about to start going parabolic. I truly believe this next one is gonna be a big one, and that's what we're seeing across the board. The fact is, all of the money is going into Arbitrum right now. All of the epicenter of DeFi stuff will be done through Arbitrum. All of the decentralized exchanges are building on Arbitrum. There's a reason why there's so much money going into this stuff. And I've been very adamant about telling you guys, you need to be bridging to Arbitrum. You need to be researching into Arbitrum altcoins because I truly do not see a bigger opportunity. This is year seven for me in crypto. I've been able to make a lot of money. I've made a lot of losses. I've made tons of mistakes. And I've done everything that I can over the last three years to be early to trends, to try and learn as much as I can, to follow people that are in nowhere smarter than me, and ask people that are smarter than me questions so that I can actually learn myself. And literally, guys, all of my preparation over the last seven years are kind of cultivating towards this exact same point in time. And I'm telling you guys, I truly do not believe that there's a bigger opportunity out there than what we're seeing with Arbitrum right now. So the reason I'm being annoying about it, the reason I'm talking about it every single video is because that's the only way that we're going to get people to realize the opportunity before it's too late. If you want to make money, you have to be early to trends. And I don't see a bigger money opportunity than what we're seeing inside of the Arbitrum 
than what we're seeing inside of the Arbitrum trend right now. With that being said, let's talk about some coins that are building on Arbitrum. And the first one on today's list is going to be uh, our DPX. This is one that I really, really think is gonna be taking off in a big way. We're sitting right at these range highs. It looks exactly like the first Ethereum cycle inside of its bear market. And that tells me that a lot of the same money is accumulating these. If not the same money, there's a lot of money accumulating this and it shows inside of the chart. Many altcoins made lower lows. Many altcoins continue to bleed. Some of them still haven't even rallied very much out of this entire move. The cryptos that are rallying, a lot of them are built on Arbitrum right now. And in my opinion, it's perfectly showing why there's so much of an opportunity here. Many of the better looking charts in the market are altcoins that are literally built on Arbitrum that are now breaking out and going into new highs. And that's what we're seeing right now with RDPX. Inside of RDPX, we just got a pullback. We're retesting the range highs right now. And we could also come over here and look at GMX as a whole. GMX just broke out of its all time high. This is a 320 day range that we've been accumulating inside of. Now that we broke out of the all time high, we would expect to see a big move coming. And with us being, you know, in my opinion, at our final move inside of this short term local top, this is where we would expect to see the altcoin money really start to take off. This thing has a ton of volume. It's the leader for Arbitrum. If you want, you know, the Ethereum of the crypto markets, and you're looking for that built on Arbitrum, GMX is that. It's the leader of Arbitrum. I believe that it will continue to be the leader of Arbitrum until something revolutionary comes out. But that's what I think is happening, guys. What we're seeing is all of the new decentralized exchanges that are getting built are moving to Arbitrum. They're getting built on Arbitrum. And it makes sense. I mean, you wouldn't want to build a decentralized exchange on Binance chain because what happens if Binance literally does the same thing as what happened? with FTX or what happened with Celsius, or what happened with any of these different centralized exchanges. Well, technically that whole chain would be worthless as well. And the same thing can apply for, you know, a lot of other decentralized exchanges. Nobody's building on Tron. Nobody's building on Ethereum anymore because of the fact all of the decentralized exchanges that have tried to build on Ethereum, it's not possible because the gas fees are too high. Nobody's been able to figure out a way to get past all of that stuff. So they've moved off chain and the biggest off chain ad adoption is taking place on Arbitrum. GMX is a decentralized exchange. You can trade futures, you can do all of that stuff. This is the first time we've ever seen real adoption and real technology that can actually leverage trade on a decentralized exchange. So in my opinion, this was gonna continue to do really well. Even though the market cap is starting to get up there, this is gonna be one that, in my opinion, is gonna be consistent over the cycle. It's gonna provide great gains, and it's one that's a little bit more of a safer pick if you're looking for the safest one on Arbitrum. In my opinion, it's GMX. And so with us flipping the all-time highs, we're also seeing this one over here on our DPX flipping the range highs, or at least getting close. We could come back down here and retest the trend line and do something like this. But regardless, guys, we are at that point where we're going to be expecting to see bigger breakouts happen. Now, the other one on today's list is going to be Vela, and Vela is another decentralized exchange. This one's sitting at a lot less market cap. This is about $18 million in total market cap, and this is gonna be a big point that I'm trying to talk to you guys about, is decentralized exchanges. What we saw in our last cycle, the big narratives were Metaverse, NFTs, and DeFi. Those were the three spotlights of our last cycle. What we've never actually seen inside of a Bitcoin cycle is a decentralized exchange narrative that genuinely took off. That's why I believe that this is what's gonna be happening on Arbitrum. We are going to see for the first time ever decentralized exchanges that can handle a high amount of volume, high amounts of liquidity, and you can actually leverage trade on them. And so with everybody so fearful about centralized exchanges because they literally almost all went bankrupt in the bear market, everybody's gonna be moving that money into a DEX. And that's just the simple fact of the matter. That's why I believe that this cycle is gonna be so big for decentralized exchanges because everybody is scared out of their minds about holding their money on centralized exchanges. I do think that there's gonna be plenty of them that stick around. You got Coinbase, you got Binance. I don't even think Binance is gonna collapse, but nobody thought any of these others were gonna collapse either. So you're better safe than sorry, and you're safer on a decentralized exchange than anything else. With Vela, We've only finished our first five impulse waves, finished an ABC correction, and now in my opinion, we're in a couple different ways. Either we've just finished wave one of three, and that was this move right here, ABC back down, and we're getting ready for wave three, 
or we're getting ready for wave five of three. Either way, we just flipped the previous all-time highs as support, and this one being at such a low market cap, being a decentralized exchange on Arbitrum, in my opinion, as long as GMX is sitting at all-time highs looking for price discovery, RDPX is sitting at the range highs about to go into price discovery, all of these are gonna be benefiting when everybody sees GMX taking off and they start thinking to themselves, oh man, where's an undervalued decentralized exchange like GMX that I could put money into? Well, this is one of those examples. And so I think you should pay attention for this. This uh, exchange isn't even open to the public yet. It'll be open in three days for everybody else to go and trade. So I think that once that happens, once that announcement comes that they're live and they start marketing even more, we're probably gonna see the market take off in a big way. So be paying attention for this one. Next up on today's list is going to be Plutus. And this is gonna be another one of those spotlighted cryptos on Arbitrum. What I'm focused on is cryptos that are only built on Arbitrum. Because if we look over here at the Arbitrum chart, and at the, the entire ecosystem, you guys are gonna notice that every single one of these are ultimately built on another chain first until we get to GMX. GMX is the only one that's only native to Arbitrum. And then if we get down here, you have Magic, and then you have to go way down here even further to be able to find some more. And, you know, Dopex is all the way down here at 322. RDPX is 364. So we have a ton of these different projects that are only built on Arbitrum. And they're sitting at, you know, not even $100 million in total market cap. So most of these projects are actually leaving Ethereum and bridging over to Arbitrum. And that's the big thing I want you guys to remember here. There's very few cryptos that are actually just built on Arbitrum as a whole. And the ones that I'm talking to you guys about today are all strictly on Arbitrum. And Plutus is one of those examples. It's currently sitting at about $8 million in total market cap. I like this setup because of the fact it's only ever had one cycle. And that was this move right here. We had some descending resistance. We broke out, flipped it as support. And now we're at this point where we're about to break out and going into our next major move. This one is still undervalued. Even though we're breaking out, even though we're kind of FOMO buying at resistance, it's not necessarily that bad of a setup considering we've only ever just you know, had one market cycle. And with it being at $8 million in total market cap, this one can take off in a big way. This is a DeFi protocol. You can basically earn yield off of a number of different cryptos. You can combine cryptos into different vaults and you can earn more interest that way. And so I think that these are gonna do really well because they are strictly built on Arbitrum. And with all of the DeFi money going into Arbitrum, because it's the only network that actually can support it, I think it's a very obvious play that anything sitting under $20 million in market cap that's strictly built on Arbitrum, that offers yield, that offers ways to trade or different things like that, I think that they're gonna do very, very well. And Plutus is one of those that just shows a lot of accumulation. This entire process, you're not seeing just quick impulses and then sell-offs, you're seeing steady, consistent growth. And that's exactly what we were just talking about over here on the daily transactions chart. This isn't just blow off tops and sharp crashes. Crashes. This is literally steady, consistent gains. And that's what I believe is gonna continue to play out from here. So this is what I would watch out for. Next up on today's list is going to be Jones Dow. And Jones Dow is kind of in a similar situation as all of the other ones, where it looks just like the early 2017 or 2019 to 2020 Ethereum cycle. And that's what tells me that there's a lot of big money that is propping this up. What we see with a lot of altcoins is the fact that they haven't even broke out of their ranges yet. You know, a lot of them made lower lows when FTX collapsed, but the ones that held support, even with all of the max fear in the market with FTX, those are the ones that end up doing the best. And that's what we're seeing with all of the arbitrary plays. They end up holding the best support. They look the best inside of their impulses. The most money is flooding into them. And it's just more reason on why I think that these are gonna do so much better than the majority of coins out there. This one just flipped its all time high. Whereas, you know, with RDPX, we're still kind of messing around waiting for that true breakout, even if we come back down a little bit lower. What we're seeing with Jones Dow is it's already been consolidating on top as support. We've had multiple retests as support, and now we're starting to get the early breakouts before we'll most likely end up making a bigger move to the upside. It's the same sort of stuff as what happened with Ethereum. Now, I can't say specifically if we're just gonna follow this 100% exact, but up to this point, it's pretty eerily similar how much this thing actually does follow it. And that's every bear market. We're gonna see certain cryptos follow the same bottom formations that have played out over the last 10 years of Bitcoin's price history. And uh, Jones Dow is one of the DeFi 
protocol is one of the lead DeFi protocols on Arbitrum right now. And so I think that this is one that we should really pay attention for because it's actually got a lower market cap than the other ones. It's only at about $16 million total market cap. And so if we're gonna see a big Arbitrum run, these DeFi protocols that are providing opportunities for you know institutional investors to get in, most importantly, Institutions can't use Ethereum, institutions won't use Binance Chain, institutions won't use Tron. Polygon's probably the only other one that they would genuinely use, but even uh, Polygon's more centralized in a lot of ways. Arbitrum is truly one of the only huge opportunities where the average person can participate, where institutions can participate, and I think that all of that combined is a reason we're gonna see such massive returns over the next couple months. So these are the ones I had on today's list. I wanted to give you guys this update because I see a huge opportunity when we look at all of the stuff that's happening, when we when we look at all of the accumulation taking place, I've been in crypto for seven years. This is my seventh year going into it. I've been through two different bull runs in bear markets. Inside of each one, I've been able to learn more and more. And what I did basically over the last three to four years is try and learn as much as I can so that I can be early to trends, follow people that are smarter than me, ask smart people questions. And that's been my biggest goal is to be able to be early to the best trends, be able to provide that value back to you guys that watch so that we can all make the most money possible over the whole cycle. I'm telling you guys right now, I truly, with the 100%, you know, everything that I believe, which, you know, take it with a grain of salt at the end of the day, I truly believe that everything that I know is telling me that Arbitrum is going to be the biggest opportunity in this next cycle. The people that are positioning themselves now before are going to be the ones that make the most profit. And we're only at the very beginning of this, guys. This is just the very, very beginning. We'll be looking at this chart one, two, three years from now, and you won't even be able to see any of this stuff. It will go so parabolic, there will be so much money going into Arbitrum that the people that were prepared beforehand are just gonna be raking in money hand over fist. And I really genuinely believe that. At the end of the day, do your own research. That's the biggest thing. You gotta have your own conviction with this stuff, otherwise you're not gonna be able to hold the whole cycle. But for me, I'm heavily convicted into this. I've been positioning myself heavily into Arbitrum plays, and these are five that I think are gonna take off in a big way. So thank you guys so much. If you found value, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys want to sign up for my signals, you want to see all of these trades before I talk about them on YouTube, every single one of the coins that you guys see on my channel gets covered first on in my signal service, and that's where I actually talk about it first. It's the first place we go. I post entries. I post where I'm going to be taking profits, how I diversify my portfolio, different cryptos I'm in, out, NFT picks. All of that stuff is going to get to you guys first inside of the signals. So if you guys want to be able to see exactly what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, how I'm playing the markets, and also earlier than I ever talk about it on YouTube, links are in the description to go ahead and sign up on my signals. It's a lifetime membership, one-time fee. You guys are gonna be able to see everything that I do throughout the entire history of my investing in markets. I genuinely love what I do here and I don't plan on leaving by any means. You know, I plan on being here for a few more cycles for crypto. And even when I leave crypto, there's many more opportunities out there for diversification. And so if you guys wanna see what I'm doing long-term, links are in the description to check it out. Thank you so much for the support. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one. As always, peace out.